Welcome to the Nurtured Nerds Epic Podcast. Come join us and get cuddly, get gaming, get nerdy, and, and get, get nurtured. nurtured. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alyssa, also known as the IRL Support Main. I am a cuddle therapy practitioner and a gamer nerd. And I'm here with my wonderful co-host, Mary. Yay. Yep, this is episode four, right? Yep. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm Mary. I am known as Mary Cuddler in the cuddle world. And yeah, I've been doing cuddle stuff for five or six years. I'm a band geek, theater nerd. I'm a gamer nerd adjacent, I would say. <laughs> and, uh, this has just been fun getting to um, really uh, explore the nerdy side, you know? <laughs> So I'm having a great time and I'm glad to be here today again. Yay. <laughs> Yay. So we just recorded yesterday, but is there anything new? Oh, I know you talked to your friend who we're going to have on our next podcast. That's exciting. Yes. I'm going to share a story, a teaser about our next guest later, probably. Cool. So something to look forward to. <laughs> uh, something different for me is I actually meditated for half an hour today, which is a long time for me and mm. got present to that. There's this sort of process that the brain goes through, or at least that was my experience that like, it's good to push through longer rather than like do five minutes and then build up to 10 and 15. Like there's something to be gained out of just sticking with it and seeing mm. how your brain will transition from being very like in your head to just being still. And even there's kind of an ebb and flow to that too. Um, I'll yeah. experience these moments of like just total peace and calm and then something will suddenly come up and it's fun just allowing it to be there. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's something that was different for me since our last podcast recording. <laughs> nice. I actually went out and had a, one of my long walks. I'm trying to do walks more. And this morning I walked about three miles, so I'm building up and um, it is, it's meditative to, you know, to have the motion and the walking and the, let my mind be f open and yeah, so that took me um, over an hour. So yeah, I like the long meditation when I can get myself to do it. It definitely does clear my mind. And so I, I totally get what you're talking about. It's cool that you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping to build up to longer as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that is so true. When it's something that's embodied, it helps you really get into flow more when you're moving and using your body. Um, it's a very yeah. different experience of the meditation state. Yeah, there's a way to do it being still and there's a way to do it moving. Like I'm a knitter as well. So when I'm knitting and it's a repetitive motion. Yeah, you know, me so, too. Yeah. Oh, we have see, so much in common. We're learning so many things about <laughs> each other. <laughs> yeah, we both learned uh, behind the scenes last night that we we're both singers. And that yes. was really cool. We both are into opera and have done that a yes. bit. Mary more so than me, for sure. <laughs> um, I did more just like choir, but. Um, yeah, I was singing with Utah Opera for 18 years and a really fun thing. I, I, yeah, I love musical theater and choir. I did choirs for a while too. So yeah, we're, we're really connecting and I love it. We both played flute in middle school. Yes. We learned that too. <laughs> Crystal did too, our lovely guest. Uh -huh. Yes. Woo. <laughs> Band nerds. Nice. Um, oh, so uh, tea, my tea of the episode. Oh, yes, please. What's is, your tea? Um, what I'm drinking right now is called <laughs> Cranberry Vanilla Wonderland, and it's delicious. Ah. There's this like image of, of a snow globe with a tree, and there's like these deer and forest animals gathered around it and cran a cranberry tree next to it and <laughs> Cool. Um, it's got rooibos, hibiscus, cinnamon, um, and cranberry and vanilla, uh, chicroy, orange peel, chamomile, juniper berries. That's a surprise. Okay. Yeah. And dried cranberries. All right. Interesting. It's, it's yummy. That's all I know. <laughs> and very relaxing, very grounding um, with the, mm -hmm. the warmth and the smell and the taste. And mm -hmm. yeah, I love my daily pot of tea. I love that you're a tea connoisseur. I've been getting more into tea lately and, and, uh, you know, trying different things and 
That makes me happy. I know it kind of, uh, I was going to ask you because yesterday I actually had two mixed together. I was drinking nettle leaf with pepper, with peppermint in it. Yeah, it blew and, my um, mind. You had I was going to say, together. you said that blew your mind. <laughs> Have you thought of any cool tea uh, combinations you might try later? Maybe for an another episode? <laughs> well, I was thinking that the two of the ones that I've, uh, I've showed to, or, or told our listeners about, um, would go good together the um the nutcracker sweet black tea and the white chocolate peppermint green tea that I'm oh. I'm curious to see if those would go well together cool. but that's another thing too is like I use one tea bag for a whole pot of tea so like four mm. cups of tea and so I'm worried that I'll mix them together and I'll have this whole pot of tea and then I won't like it I'm like oh I guess um, I gotta dump this out <laughs> It might happen, but you but know, life's it's an it. adventure, right? Experimentation, so. yeah. <laughs> what are you drinking, Mary? Cool. So I'm actually drinking one of my favorites. I realize it is tea. It's a uh, chai. I love chai. Oh, I haven't had chai in so long. It's so, so yummy. Yeah, this is Oregon chai. It's the liquid in the box, and I actually found this one. It's called a little sweet, and it's got a like a oh, third slightly of slightly sweet. Okay, slightly sweet. Yeah. And it's like a third of the sugar of the regular one. Cause you know, I do like the Oregon chai, but um, it's very, very sweet. Yeah. And you, you mix the liquid with milk and then you heat it up, you know, and in oh. the coffee shops, they do it with the steamer. But mm. I actually was going to show you this cause this is like one of my nerdy things. I have a hot drink maker. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah. But, um, <laughs> is it just a wa water yeah. boiler or? Yeah, it, it actually doesn't bring it to boiling because it heats it up and then it stirs it and it kind of frosts it and gets it wow. like just, just to the right temperature. So it's not going to burn your tongue. So I love it for chai or hot chocolate or I guess you could do, I mean, you wouldn't want it for tea because you do want the water to be boiling for tea bags. But, um, but for, for chai, like a mix. it's perfect. For like yeah. a powdered mix or, or yeah, powdered something mix. you dilute with the milk. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. So I am drinking chai tea latte today in my coffee mug and I love it when it's cold outside and uh, yeah. Oh, is it cold where you are? Favorites. It's cold here. It's snowing. Yeah. We had a big snowstorm two days ago still. I'm in Salt Lake. Yeah. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> I grew up in a small mountain town where it snowed all the time. And mm. but since I moved away to college, like it's been over 10 years now, it's like I just miss the snow but then yeah. again like I'm not used to it anymore it, yeah. it's 60 out and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> Today I, miss it's California. I miss California because I lived in San Diego when I was a teenager um yeah and someday go back to the ocean yeah and you know what we do have Crystal with us and she's listening and she's got tea too and oh. t Crystal do you want to tell us what you're drinking and then introduce yourself yeah, or maybe the other way party. around. Make our tea party complete, Crystal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. I'm Crystal <laughs> from Pittsburgh, um, professional cuddler. Very happy to, to chat with you ladies today. I do have <laughs> ma matcha tea with me. That is like my Ooh, favorite. Yeah. It's like a green tea. It's powdered. You can mix mm -hmm. it with like, I use like a nut milk or a almond milk or like a, like a hemp um, milk. Mm. And cool. I add a little bit of agave to it. So it's like super good. Mm. It's almost like a latte. I'd never thought of mixing matcha with milk. I had some earlier, but it was just by itself. So it tastes better that way. <laughs> it definitely tastes <laughs> smoother in the, in the you know, process. I love it. It's a great um, caffeine boost too, uh, mm. as an alternative to coffee. Definitely. Coffee can be too much for me where it like gives my <laughs> digestion some issues. So. Mm -hmm. Good I alternative. tend to be very affected by caffeine. So I feel you on that. <laughs> yeah. I think matcha is a little bit of an acquired taste. I've actually tried it, but I don't like the flavor. <laughs> Fair enough. You're, you're not alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I imagine you just taking it as a shot. You're like, with your, holding your nose, you're like, medicine. <laughs> uh, sometimes. Hmm. Well, Crystal, we want to hear, like, uh, what kind of work do you do? Uh, I know you, you've got your finger in a lot of pies, don't you? <laughs> well, I, I am uh, so happy to say that I've been professionally cuddling for about three years. I do offer one-on-one -on -one sessions, um, and I, I did also take a group facilitation course um, to offer group events. Uh, prior to the pandemic, I was offering uh, group events for about, I want to say, almost a full year before the pandemic mm -hmm. hit. Um, and so my goal is to you know, continue that work once that's uh, applicable again and, and possible. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I am, I'm currently working actually on the phones. I do a work from home job for like my day job. Um, but yeah, so I'm also looking to offer consent workshops and authentic relating workshops uh, mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh, especially because I think there'll be a great transition, something we can do virtually, but also something that as we start to be more open, uh, it'll be non-touch, but, you know, kind of working into that arena again. So I'm super excited and always learning. That's good. Yeah, I love doing the group events and workshops. That's kind of my sweet spot. Me too. Um, Me too. Yeah. Hey, I am so excited to share it with our community when, whenever those events happen, just saying, Crystal's doing this guys, please check <laughs> it out. Cause she's great. And her content's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I really enjoy the work and I think it's, it's super, super beneficial and super helpful. It's almost like a little safe space playground where you can learn how to say yes and no to things. Like it's, it's just such a wonderful experience. Um, cool. for people that are introverted or extroverted alike. I feel like both parties can learn so much. Mm. And, and you are offering virtual sessions and virtual events right now? I am. I'm definitely yeah. offering virtual sessions. I've, I've mm -hmm. had a couple of virtual things event-wise, but I'm still working on, you know, learning how to do that most efficiently. Mm. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely a learning mm. curve. <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell us how you learned about pro cuddling, how you got into this, what your initial experience was, how that's changed over time. Sure. Yeah. I, um, I want to say I got into uh, professional cuddling or at least learned about it over five years ago. Um, I ran across some information on the internet and there was this really interesting YouTube video about someone in New York cuddling. And I just thought, wow, that seems so cool. And Zen. And, um, and then I, I think I ran across Samantha Hess's book and it was about touch and it kind of really called to me. Her story was just so, yeah, I have that. I love it. And um, it, it's so called to me. <laughs> it made me um, just so interested. It was such a, a lot of parallels, let's say. So I felt um, that hugs should be available. I felt that touch should be important in a relationship. And again, I was just so inspired. Um, and, and so I, uh, you know, I kind of, kept it on the back burner. <laughs> I kept it on the back burner and um, just kept it in my thoughts in the back of my head. And at one point I kind of hit a wall mentally um, with my relationships and with things going on in my own life and in my personal, um, you know, life. Uh, I'm a single mom and I care so much about my kids and they, they really um, play a major role in all my decisions. And so they made, they played a role in both the decision to become a cuddler and the reason I waited for a while. I really wanted mm. to feel safe and I wanted to find the best place to learn and I wanted to have the resources to, to offer a safe space for people. And so at one point, again, roughly, I'd say three and a half to four years ago, I kind of just said enough is enough, I'm gonna do this. And I found, I ran into somebody, I started really networking and really reaching out to open-minded spaces in Pittsburgh to try to say, hey, I want to offer this. I want to do this. And I, I, I met a wonderful lady. Her name was actually also Crystal. And she uh, is just an amazing human in Pittsburgh. And she said, hey, I'll offer you the space. Just go get that training. And so I started training with Samantha Hess. I want to say, I actually wrote a note here for myself. January of 2018, I want to say, um, I actually went to Portland, Oregon twice to train with her. Um, and then I decided to go to Cuddle Sanctuaries training um, because I was really, I was really called to both of their perspe perspectives on cuddling. You know, I feel like it's a very therapeutic modality or can be, and I feel that their approach to teaching is, is like, is very therapeutic and very calming. So it's really something I needed. If that makes yeah, sense. that's so <laughs> different from my own experience getting into this. Like I've engaged with all these trainings um, online but yeah. you've done this, these road trips, these trips of just going, sorry, I don't know, maybe you flew, but, um, like you take these trips to go do this training. Like what, what was that like for you? Um, cause that must've been really like just such a transformative experience. 100%. The hands down, that is, that is exactly what it felt like. It was so, uh, I, I felt like I evolved so much. I felt like such a community and I felt like it was such a healing experience for me personally. I think that my own um, 
mentality, my own space, my own understanding of, of consent, touch, professional cuddling was just so blown out of the water by these, these wonderful communities and groups. Um, I was lucky enough to go to uh, Cuddle Expo, which I wrote down. It was in Chicago in September, I believe, of 2018. And mm -hmm. that's actually where I met the lovely Mary. <laughs> yes, I know. I was just thinking about that. I was like, that Cuddle Expo was amazing. And I wish we could do it every year. I, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's I met Crystal there. And she's just a bubbly, happy personality. And, you know, yeah, I, that's where I met almost everybody I know in the cuddle world is at the Cuddle Expo. So it was mm. such an experience that was so transformative. Mm -hmm. as well, and that's what inspired me to want to do group events that really gave me uh -huh. such a flavor for all the other beautiful groups out there. I got to meet so many people in Cuddleist. You know, I was so mm -hmm. excited and supported by those people. Um, and it just really helped continue my desire to, to promote this in Pittsburgh and to promote this modality mm -hmm. in general. And I'm just loving, I mean, maybe that I hope this rings true for you too, but you guys can tell me, but uh, just how in our cuddle world, we do have some little people that have decided a way to do it like Cuddleist or Cuddle Sanctuary, you know, they, it's, a, it's different. But everybody is so supportive of each other. You know, there's so much room. It's it's not a scarcity mentality of like we can offer different modalities and like a lot of people are trying to take all the training so that we know which ones work best for us and for our clients. And you know, at the Cuddle Expo, they had a different group event every night so that we could experience like how people do it differently and decide which ones spoke to us the best or or so that we can learn uh, the different modalities to be able to offer to people. And I just love that inclusivity thing. And that's actually overall for cuddling, right? It's all about inclusivity and, and acceptance. That definitely yeah. does ring true for me. Hmm. Yeah, yeah we're all allowed that. to have our own little flavor of it and, mm -hmm. and still like all love each other and support each other and lift each other up in those differences because we're united in this desire to really help people meet their needs. Absolutely. Yes. I love that in this industry. And then, yeah, so <laughs> that's what, that's what was coming up for me when you were saying that crystal. Um, yeah. So I had to share. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for sharing. And I, I agree that that is the truth on, on every level with cuddling, you know, mm -hmm. what works for one party doesn't work for another. I know that I choose to, to yeah. take a certain approach uh, in general, whether it's like how I market or what I, what I choose to bring to the, the space or like mm -hmm. the stuffed animals I choose. I know that sounds silly, but like those all come into play you know, like what I, what I kind of, my personality really can show through. And I think that's true again. Is that mm -hmm. I don't think that sounds silly at all. Like it's about play really. Yeah. And that's the most well, healing aspect, yeah. I think. Well, and it's about connecting individuals. And if you don't have your personality there, it's, it's clinical and that's something different, you know, <laughs> and, right. and that's okay. But I, you know, to me, that's not cuddling if you're not actually there focused and connecting on an individual level. And, and so your personality should be there in play, in my opinion. <laughs> That's a really good I definitely point. agree. <laughs> mm -hmm. I 100% I agree. And I actually think, again, that is, that is the most healing portion of it is that mm -hmm. we're in this together. You know, it, instead of being someone looking down as, as some forms of therapy can be, like you're in the trenches together. And I always, that's one of the ways I like mm -hmm. to describe it. Yeah. It's like that Brene Brown uh comic or you know the animation <clears throat> drawing or whatever where she's what she's explaining empathy right and you're looking down in a hole and somebody's down in a dark hole and you, you, can anyone explain it better than me <laughs> it's a classic it's a classic but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's instead of um instead of saying like oh you're down there it looks like it's a tough time you jump in with you and say hey i'm with you i see i see yeah. you here together say, yep here we are in a hole yeah but, you know <laughs> Let's dig I'm ourselves here. out together, climb out yeah, together. Yeah, we're together. Yep, yep. <laughs> one of my favorites, that cartoon, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one to explain the difference. Of like, oh, you seem to be in a hole. See you, <laughs> bye. <laughs> that's, not, that's not really that helpful. <laughs> yeah, so that's like sympathy versus empathy. Sympathy is like, yeah. I see you in the hole. That sucks. I'm sorry you're down <laughs> there. Okay, mm -hmm. and then empathy is like, I'm getting in there with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. It sounds that. like that's your that's your modus operandi, Crystal. Is it? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually uh, reading uh, Brene, and I, I apologize if I mispronounce it. Brene Brown's book, uh, "The Gift of Imperfection," now, and I 100 mm. percent feel very strongly that yeah, my my practice is very hey, we're in this together. We're in the trenches, mm -hmm. growing together and evolving together, and it's 
it's really beautiful and, and not perfect and, and yeah. awkward moments are really welcome. <laughs> yeah. I believe that's correct, by the way, just mm-hmm. to put that out there. You know, and that's, that's also why I like the, I like to identify myself as a facilitator. Like I'm not doing anything other than creating you know, an opportunity and maybe giving you some ideas, but the person has to do the work and I'm there to help them do it. But like, it's, they're the one being the primary person, the driver. They're the source of their own healing. Yeah. They're the source of their own healing. I'm trying to, I'm facilitating it, giving up, hopefully providing opportunities for, you know, (laughs) you're just holding the space for it to happen. Mm -hmm. Holding space. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, Let's see. What's it what's it like out in Pittsburgh? Do you, are there a lot of other practitioners out there that you that you can connect with? So, I'm really grateful to be in the city. I feel like it's a it's a good mix of open-mindedness and unfortunately not open-mindedness, but mm. uh, I'm happy to say that uh, I have at least a small community of people that are very open to professional cuddling. They've either come to events or been supportive. I also have a co-cuddler. Um, I actually worked with him. He went to Cuddle Expo. He's helped with Cuddle Expo actually, uh, trained with me a couple times. So grateful to have him in, in my life. Um, I know he's not as active at this point. I feel like he's, he's not doing as much with the cuddle world during this pandemic, but Mm. I know that he's still interested in working with us in the future. And I'm very happy to have that kind of support, but I am, I do feel like the Lone Ranger sometimes it depends on, (laughs) especially in the beginning. Um, and so my goal is actually to promote training uh, and to promote the opportunity that people, you know, look at some of those major sources of training. So I include, you know, Cuddle Sanctuary, Cuddleist, Certified Cuddlers in that, and of course, mm-hmm. safety. So so I, I mm-hmm. would love Pittsburgh to have that modality a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I, do, I do promote it and I do have several people that have shown a lot of interest. Um, and I'm very interested in like, helping people like even just friendship mentoring and being like let's learn together so cool that's my goal in Pittsburgh (laughs) Uh, so we touched on this a bit earlier but um what was it like visiting Sam Hest and and cut out to me her space cut out to me oh my god I'm in awe of her space which uh, I was so blessed to see I know that she's not using that space at this point I think she's hoping Mm. to 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 do that again at some point Mm -hmm. um what was really neat is she had themed rooms Mm -hmm. um so she, she was able to do, and I, I bought some really cool lights to like rock out once I, once I'm able to, again, I'm totally using these lights, but <laughs> like starry night sky, there's one room that was kind of oriented in, in like a look like space, outer space. Um, that would actually, have been mine that I would pick. Mm-hmm. It's one of, it's my, one of my favorites. I think it's one of the most popular too. She had all of her, um, like hired professional cuddlers, like all of her team help her build these rooms. And so they kind of decorated really interestingly. They used 3D type of um, effects. So they would use uh, textiles or, you know, extra materials to kind of make it pop out in the space. So there was like an ocean themed room with a piece of, it it either had a keyboard or or music uh, in that room. They would, they would do music. They had a forest room that was just very green. Uh, They had like a meditative Zen room that had some dinosaurs in it. That is something Samantha Hess really loves. <laughs> That's so cute. It's like That's a little awesome. kid's pajamas. It's awesome. <laughs> it was probably the coolest thing ever. And what I really like again about her space and in general about practicing out of a safe space is it helps create that boundary and that safe container for both the client and for the practitioner. I feel like mm. being able to utilize that space was really inspiring to me and really helped me feel feel more professional and, and be able to, mm-hmm. to be professional cuddling. I think that's what I needed. So I was very called to to Samantha Hess's work and to learning from her specifically. Yeah, it's a great space. Mm. Yeah, I wish, I wish her the best of luck opening her space Mm -hmm. again, as we get ramped up, hopefully very soon. (laughs) Yeah. Um, can you tell us about something that uh, may have happened in the session or workshop that was like really yummy for you or a client that you had an experience with? So I am so blessed. I've had a lot of really wonderful clients. Um, I am definitely uh, thinking of one specific <laughs> instance. And this is interesting because I, I, 
I think my sessions range on average from like an hour to like an hour and a half to, to two hours tops. Like I really, those, that's like the meat and potatoes. I don't usually do super long or super short sessions. Um, and I once had a three hour session with a wonderful gentleman. Um, <laughs> And I kept thinking three hours, what are we going to do for three hours? Oh my gosh. But it, it really it flies actually, by, doesn't it? It, it, went by so, fast. <laughs> it went so quickly. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I was very impressed how quickly it went. And I think again, that was because we, we had such a good connection. We actually also watched Rick and Morty together a little bit. <laughs> Interesting. It was like so cool. So that was so yummy. <laughs> that was so yummy. And I, I honestly think <clears throat> that I walked away from that feeling really, really full mm -hmm. and like it was you know it didn't feel like work you know it felt like a wonderful cool. session yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> we, now we've had a couple other cuddlers on the podcast and 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 we've heard like what's their process and I'd love to hear like what's your process from the beginning like when a prospective client uh, uh, contacts you what what happens from start to finish Th that's a great question I really actually like that question um so I I have to admit that uh despite the fact that like I'm so open and so active and so energetic and so interested in connecting and touch. Um, but I think that I usually choose a very safe route at first. And I think that that's most professional cuddlers, of course, but I feel like I almost, I vet clients very strongly, if that makes sense. Meaning I require a phone call. And this is partially due to the, the training I had with Samantha Hess uh, from the get-go. I um, People reach out to me in all sorts of methods. I'm very blessed to have all these interesting ways they reach out to me, Facebook Messenger on my business page. Um, I have a business line that they can text. I have an email. And of course, I'd be happy to provide any of those uh, if anyone wants to ever reach out and ask questions. Um, mm -hmm. I believe your info is on our website too as well, correct? Awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm so yeah, grateful. We'll have all that for everybody too. If you want to get contact with Crystal, we'll have that in the notes, I'm sure. I love it. I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. I, um, yeah, so they, they contact all these wonderful ways. And I usually try to kind of funnel that down and say, well, hey, when do you have time for a phone call? And so much can be said in someone's tone of voice. So I always, mm -hmm. I don't even have to ask that many questions. I mean, I have certain ones that I ask, like, hey, how did you, how did you find me? Or, or, you know, what website were you looking at? Or, you know, what interested you in professional cuddling? And, you know, their answer says everything. Their answer says their interest. Their answer says what they're, what they're going through, what healing process they're going through. Or their answer will tell me if maybe their intentions aren't, in line with mine. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's usually so apparent so quickly with a phone call that that tone of voice, that phone call is, is like hundred percent hands down a requirement. Um, and then from that point, you know, I require at least a little bit of time before we, we do actual touch. So we do some consulting work. Um, and that can be right before the session, meaning we're kind of in almost in session, just sitting and connecting and kind of building trust, or that can be in a coffee shop or prior to the session. It really depends on my, tr my comfort level and theirs. Um, and so I kind of make sure that they're aware of that the whole time, that safety is, is paramount and that my goal is to make this a comfortable space for both of us. Um, and, and so the vetting process is very quick, but it's, I think it's really thorough. Like, I feel like that tone of voice, it just really mm -hmm. gives me a hundred percent of what they need or, or what's going on in their, you know, mindset about cuddling. Cause it's, it can be, I think it takes a lot of courage and I think people have a lot of anxiety. And so I try to be very kind in, in the idea that if they need time, if we want to do consulting for a while, or if they just want to chat, but, um, but I'd say I'm relatively strict in, in that I'm like, Hey, that phone call, you're not going to meet me unless we have this phone call. Ah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that is in line with what others have said. Does that sound, um, yeah, parallel or yeah, definitely. And it's funny. Like oh. I, at first was very averse to that because um well for one thing like so I started through Cuddleist well I really I started through Snuggle Buddies and through that they would just give me the clients but mm -hmm. like through Cuddleist you can be more choosy and then like you get to choose your screening process and I would just start with email okay and I was noticing that like it can be hard so I had a lot of questions because I want to know about them Mm -hmm. And that a lot of that can be really hard to convey over, over just through text, through email. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. So you're really right. And yeah. And I've even got, gotten to the place even more recently, especially since the pandemic, everything's on Zoom now. It's like, it could be so easy to just have um, a video call rather than a phone call. Cause even being able to see each other adds another layer on top of that, of being able to read body language and, mm -hmm. um, and just connect and get to know each other more and see if you're a good fit before meeting in person. Yeah. 
Love that. Yeah, I think it's great to hear all the different ways that um, the cuddlers do vet the client. And to me, it's a two way vetting, you know, like the client needs to vet me to see if I'm going to give them what they want. You know, we need to decide if we're going to, and that's kind of how I always phrase it. Like after we talk and decide if we're ready to book with each other, you know, I always do it, say it that way. Um, <clears throat> yeah, for me, I like to meet in person because I don't like to give them my phone number. And it's kind of a holdover from when I was doing online dating. When when I would give people my number, they would text me in the middle of the night. I'm like, no, no, you, you don't get my number till I meet you in person. And I know that I want to have a contact with you. <laughs> so for me, I actually try to develop, you know, get a meeting at a coffee shop or something in person for, and I tell them it's, it's like for 20 minutes or so, we can ask all our questions and get our setup done. So then when we actually book a session, then we can actually just start the session. Um, and I think my, my doing that is unusual, I believe in the cuddle community. <laughs> so a lot of people do the phone call. Yeah, no, yeah. I do like that though. I like that perspective a lot, actually. Yeah. I, I do have a separate line, like a business line. Cause I, I agree with you that phone calls mm -hmm. at weird hours or phone calls in inappropriate times is never helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a separate phone number, a Google voice number for, for clients specifically. So cool. Yeah. I tried that. It somehow it didn't work for me. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I had a client that um, I actually had set up a, a prospective client. I had set up a meeting with him to meet and do that intake meeting, which is free for me. Um, and, and then like that night after we had scheduled it, he texted me 30 times between 1130 and 1am. <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh and I was asleep you know and I've got my thing on silent I'm like okay this is not happening again and and then I would like message him the next morning I'm like oh it sounds like you had a bad night I'll meet you you know here's our time I was gonna go through with it but he would never uh contacted me again <laughs> so I was like that's too bad because I probably could have helped you I don't know what you were yeah. going through but <laughs> yeah but I don't respond to texts at midnight usually <laughs> Oh yeah, I have a cut off of like 10 p.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I I really did start out having feel or feeling a kind of pressure or guilt like I needed to respond immediately and then just be like, no, yeah. it's good enough to respond when it's right for me. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So, what um. What are some of the like you talked a bit about your your screening process. Mm -hmm. But what are the, what are some of the things, like some of the precautions that you take to keep yourself safe or to, to empower your clients to keep themselves safe? Mm -hmm. I think again, safety is, is so important. I think that, uh, that's a really good question and something I love, I love touching upon and I love thinking about, and I love explaining to people how, how imperative safety is being, being a mom and caring so much for my own kids and just thinking about, you know, the fact that it takes so much courage to walk into any room with somebody you haven't really gotten to know well and, and put yourself in these, these intimate poses with them, you know, that takes a lot of trust and that takes a lot of courage. And I think that no matter what you want to err on the side of caution, and that should be very easily understood. So some of the things that I do, uh, I, I do require that they show me at least show me, but if not, I even take a picture of a up-to-date photo ID. And that's really just to make sure that who they, who they say they are is, is who they are, who they're telling me they are. Um, and, and if I have pushback on that, I do just try to explain the reasoning and I'm always willing to continue to consult or continue to talk if there is an issue for pushback on, on anything like that. I have actually had a client that said that they weren't comfortable giving me that. And it was interesting because when we discussed it and figured out the reasons, there was no reason for us to feel unsafe. It, it was actually a really beautiful connection that we had. Um, uh, another thing I do is the safety buddy, uh, which means that somebody knows where I'm at. Yeah. No matter what, if, if I'm going to be in session with somebody, first time client, second time client, doesn't matter how many times I've seen this client, um, my safety buddy does know that I'm, the, that I'm with, with a client. And then they mm -hmm. also know when I'm not with a client, when I'm done. Mm -hmm. um, I'm lucky enough to have a space in Pittsburgh that I work out of. Uh, okay. It's a place that has massage and Reiki and all sorts of really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's oftentimes somebody present. They know that if it's a first time session, they, they care about me and, they, and I ask them, hey, is someone going to be, be there that day? And usually somebody is there um, and just knows that I'm there. And that's, that's another kind of la layer of safety. Um, nice. But I think it comes down to your own uh, boundaries and personality and, and being able to feel safe and own your safety. I think that's a real 
big mm-hmm. important factor in safety as well. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Sorry. Um, something that came up with me, it come, came up for me when you were talking, it's, it's a little bit unrelated, but well, not really, but you were talking about like when people are coming to be intimate with a stranger, you know, I, I was just thinking, you know, that's something I hear from people a lot. It's like, oh, I'd never cuddle a stranger. And, you know, I always say, well, you know what? I don't cuddle strangers. That's why I have that intake meeting. We get to know each other. We only cuddle when it feels right. When, it, when we get to know each other enough to feel like we are comfortable to do whatever, you know, cuddling. Um, yeah. Is, does that ring true for you guys? Definitely. I think um, actually what you said made me think of an FAQ answer that I put on a website mm-hmm. of um, it was just, you know, wouldn't it not be good because because you don't know each other. I'm like, well, if that's true, then I mean, not to to bash on anybody else's practice, but I'm like, they're probably not really doing their job if if you yeah. don't know each other. Like yeah. you, really, you need to establish some sort of connection in order for mm-hmm. that touch to feel safe and to feel nurturing. Like if it's just a random touch, there's not, there's mm-hmm. not really that bonding that happens. It's, it's like a psychological, like evolutionary magic that happens of, you know, this person is part of my, mm-hmm. my tribe, even if it's more of like a tertiary kind of way, if they're a client, they're not actually part of your day-to-day life. You still need that that knowing of each other, even if it's still relatively surface level as a first time client or second time client. Yes. I, I love that. And, and that's something that I try to explain too, is like, you're not paying me to have access to touch me because that's called something else, which is not bad, (laughs) but that's just not what I do. And that's not what I think cuddling is. Like if you just want to pay to have access to touch somebody, you can you can get that, but just not from me. And and no shame. It's just not what I offer. You know, <laughs> this is something different. Where you're paying to have my full focus, my training, my, you know, my facilitation and all my education there to actually connect with you. You know, you're paying for my time. It's you're not paying access to touch me. <laughs> and if if that's what you want, then I hope, you know, let's find it for you. Not here. <laughs> you know. <laughs> How, how do you guys feel about that? Yeah, that, that rings true for me. And yeah. I was trying to find a good analogy with some other modality of like what that would look like in another modality, almost like a, you see a therapist, but they're not allowed to ask you any personal questions about your life or something. It's like, yeah. how would that help you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, there, it's hard to find analogies because this is so new and it's different. It's so different, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> well crystal we hear that you're a gamer too um right so how, how do you think this time of isolation and you know gamers have a lot of crossover with people that might already have social isolation you know that's kind of a venn diagram right <laughs> um, how, how do you think this time is really affecting our gamer community and with in terms of connections well i think the the pandemic has really brought to light um, the idea that we are we are already a very isolated society, and it's really mm-hmm. just kind of kind of like stepped it up. I feel like we've really like raised the level of isolation times ten, and and I'm I'm seeing that more and more in in everybody I speak with. Um, you know, whatever they were into before, um, I do 100% think that gaming communities and being able to to play video games with family, with friends, online, virtually, non virtually is actually such a healing, wonderful thing. I know that for Mm -hmm. me, I have such good memories playing video games with my father. I used to stay up all night in the summer and play. I have great memories playing with my my beautiful children now, even when we're playing solo games and we're just supporting each other. Um, I think that there is a level of of being brought together um, that can be mentioned with video gaming. You know, to to that, I wanted to give a positive light on video games, but I, but I also 100% that think that the pandemic has, has really pushed the envelope on mental health, you know, and it's mm-hmm. really pushed the envelope on, are you getting what you need? Are you getting the, especially in winter, you know, we're in the midst of winter in a lot of States, there's not a lot of sunshine or there's not a lot of time outside or there's not a lot of time connecting. And so I think that the gaming community can really benefit from learning connection techniques and learning, mm-hmm. you know, um, how cuddling can benefit them and, and how to find a safe buddy and how to find you know, safe people to work with uh, virtually and non-virtually in connection. 
Um, and so I, yeah, I, I feel so strongly of a connection to the gaming world and I've, I've, I have a, a very, I honestly think I'm, I'm definitely a novice with a lot of video games, but I 100% think that they've taught me tons of things about myself. I, uh, I could go into detail for, for probably hours about what helped me with video games. Like some of the mm -hmm. hand eye coordination, puzzle solving, just the ability to stay up all night. <laughs> Maybe not that one. <laughs> Um, but I, I think video games really actually played a very large role in my development and they get sometimes a bad name. People kind of are concerned about how much time you're on the TV or you're video gaming, but I think that there's a balance. And I think video games can really be a wonderful tool for escape, just like a, a book, just like watching a show, just like, you know, any, any form of self-care, I actually include video games in my self-care. Yeah. And just like any of those other things, like mm -hmm. it's a balance if you do it too much. I mean, if you're meditating all day, like, well, you're not doing other things that need you need to do, you know, things can mm -hmm. be, a, you can have too much of a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Agree. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I love uh, what you're saying about the connection in the gamer world. And that is what I hear most from gamers is like, yeah, we're, you know, it's my, my people in the gaming, in, in the game, you know, that's, that's where you are. A lot of people do get their connection and, and it's, and it's easier because it's one remove, right? It's your it's your character, or you you know it's it's a safe space because you've got the um you've got the format uh, there to yeah. Anyway, sorry, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. <laughs> oh yeah, and like you have like more control over what parts of you are being shown to the other people you're connecting there with. There you go. So if you're yes. like you know maybe a little more shy, like maybe you play a character that's nothing like you because you just mm -hmm. want to have that that time, that experience of like, what is it, what would it be like to be someone else or to be this other version of myself? Mm -hmm. I agree. I think it's almost in line with acting or LARPing or role-playing, you know, like those type of games, yep. same yeah. type of idea. I love it. Speaking of um, how others perceive you, what has your experience been like being a gamer girl? Like, how has that been for you? And um, have you noticed like over time, this change of like, there being more female gamers than there used to be or games being like more geared towards towards uh, females or towards those with non-binary gender? Well, I think that, and that's a great question. I, I really think that female empowerment has been growing for years and years and years. And I'm so grateful to be a, a woman in this day and age. Uh, I've loved video games and collected video games since I was a child, mainly Nintendo, I'm super Nintendo, but I do have PlayStation and some other stuff, but it actually brought me together with people. I was able to make tons of friends in, in college. We used to have these wonderful parties where we'd play Mortal Kombat or um, I'm trying to think of some of the others. I used to love Luigi's Mansion. We'd actually do drinking games to that one, but I have a lot of good memories with like Mario Kart or just any any game you can think of, like where we'd all play in a group or we'd all watch each other in a group or we'd all kind of be communal. And I, I think it helped me make friends of the opposite gender. I think it helped me, mm -hmm. um, you know, gain some confidence in just being able to speak with other people. And I think it, it was such a nice commonality um, that helped me be more realistic to, to the opposite gender, meaning even in the dating realm, you know, I was able to connect with, with certain friends or certain gentlemen that I was interested in. And, and it, was, it was so nice to have that that ability to connect and talk about that because it, it so it actually helped me a lot, I think. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. definitely had that experience as well, um, that it, it's helped me socially a lot. Um, yeah. Cause, and, and there's a lot less pressure too. Like you can leave anytime you want. It's, you're <laughs> connecting virtually. So it's, you're never in this situation where you're like, oh, I have to stick it out because of appearances or whatever. Like it can just be about what kind of experience you want to have. Mm -hmm. And then being in that with other people that also want to have a similar experience. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And we've been talking about like uh, leveling up and buffing your character and how we can do that in real life with each other. That's part of what we're trying to do with Nurture Nerds. Um, yeah, I'm just... Uh, do, do you think that the work you do with the cuddles and connections is, is real life leveling up? <laughs> 100%. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Actually, I read a great article in uh, psychology today year, years ago. This was like, I don't know, it must've been like eight years ago that basically talked about how you can almost do the metaphor of like, life is like a video game where you mm -hmm. self-care can be one-ups where you're, like, you listen to a good song and it, it kind of boosts you or you hang out with friends and mm -hmm. it gives you that boost, just like a, like a Mario mushroom or, you know, whatever it is, <laughs> yep. such a good 
wonderful like article that talked about you know even neuroplasticity and how we can train our brains and and that is part of leveling up is just retraining ourselves mm -hmm. to think differently to believe in ourselves to mm -hmm. to maybe change our habits maybe they're not so healthy and we want to balance them out and and so i think that the work i've done in cuddling has 100 been something i needed and helped me balance out and i'm so happy to share that even just share that that story or share that idea or share the ways that I use it. You know, I think a lot of people worry about their self-care habits. They're like, oh, video games aren't self-care. And I'm like, that's it. Yes, they are. <laughs> like, you're still evolving. Here we go. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I'm so thankful for the question because I really feel strongly that, that we're all leveling up in our own way all the time. Yeah. And I really resonate with that, like doing this work because it's something I needed to do for myself too, mm -hmm. that it really helps me. Um, and yeah, it's just been, it's like, I never stop learning and it's really fun. Like I don't have to present myself to my clients as someone who's got it figured out. I'm just like, I'm just here with you. I'm just being present mm -hmm. with you. And like, we can just be who we are right now, whatever's mm -hmm. coming up. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah Cause cuddling is a two way thing. Yeah. We, we, we are learning every moment too. And we get a lot out of it as well. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Did I cut you off, Alyssa? I'm sorry. <laughs> what? No, no, no. You seem like you're about to I'm say trying something. To get, I'm trying to give you space to ask a question too and like ah. not wanting to ask all the questions. <laughs> no, go ahead if you've got one ready. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you've, Crystal, you've talked about your kids a bit, but like really what has that been like for them or like what have you noticed from them about like their experience of you as like, the cuddle mom <laughs> that's a great question that's oh, a very how old are they just to get an idea uh so i have two beautiful children uh they're actually 10 and 11 they're 19 months okay. apart matthew and isabella uh mm -hmm. they are literally my everything um they they mean the world to me and again they are part of the reason i do the professional cuddling uh mm -hmm. because i believe in consent i believe that people should be taught to say no to touch that they don't want uh, I believe that people should understand that in any, in any relationship, in any situation, dating or otherwise, they have the right to, to own themselves and, and be safe. And so, um, so I'm really inspired by my children. Uh, they're actually adorable little gamers as well. They're little black belt dolls. Uh, we're all little black belt family. And um, so we're, we're very active together. We really work hard together. And uh, we've had kind of some bumpy roads again, uh, Prior to cuddling, I don't think I showed them the healthiest of relationships or situations. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, I wasn't at my best uh, prior to cuddling. And again, I, I'm really impressed with how much it's helped me be a better mom, uh, have a better example. Um, they, I've been open with them from the start. They know exactly what I do. Uh, they understand it. It, it. it is a little weird. I'm sure to them <laughs> at times. Um, but overall, they've been amazingly accepting. You know, my family's been amazingly accepting. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's been such an interesting journey. Uh, they're very creative individuals. My daughter loves art. My son loves to build with Legos and different things. And he's, he's very much a gamer at this point. So we, we have a lot of ways to connect. Uh, and it's helped me again, to connect better with them, to be more authentic mm -hmm. with them and to, I'm still working on it, but offer them consent. <laughs> I do like a lot of hugs from them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And are they on board with your cuddling? They're supportive yeah. or? They are very supportive. They do, of course, care about my safety, just like anyone else. Um, I think that again, at the age they are, 10 and 11, you know, they're just starting to um, mature into like the teenage years, let's say, mm -hmm. and they're just starting to understand things like, you know, gender uh, differences and, and non-binary genders. And, and they're learning about that in school. And so it's been really um, a blessing to be able to connect with them and still a learning curve. You know, I think that they are the biggest teachers for me. Yeah. I mean, they've taught mm -hmm. me the most as well as it's a continued journey, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, but I'm lucky to definitely. say that they're very supportive. Cool. Um, you know, I think we'd love to hear about like, what are your favorite games or what are games are you playing right now? Or what games do you recommend we check out? Uh, I absolutely love video games. And again, I think what's really beautiful about them is that, of course, there's a million different video games out there. There's a million different genres out there. There's a million different systems out there. Um, you know, I tend to have such a, a big heart for N Nintendo. I think they've tried really hard. They kind of keep it kid-like and I'm very kid-like myself. So I've <laughs> it's 
I love Nintendo. Um, I am a Zelda aholic. I could I could play Zelda all day, every day. Right now, I'm playing. Um, oh God, Breath of the Wild. That's what it's called. Right? Show <laughs> us your Zelda nerdy like things you have collected in your space, or just some just one thing. Like, what's your favorite Zelda thing you have? So that's a really good question. I do um, have this like it's like a, a switch holder, and it looks just like a the tablets or the Sheikah slate that Zelda holds. So I like to like walk around. I'm really weird like that. Like even with Star Wars, I like to have like, like oh, I'm, I am, you know, Zelda or I am Link or whatever. Actually, my gamer name is Lynn Link. So my middle name's Lynn, last, or not last name, but Link is, is added to that. And I use it for like almost all games. Like I love, I love Link. I've always been Link. Um, but yeah, I do have, I, I literally collected like every video game system up until I didn't do Sega or some of the later games, but I had all of them, ColecoVision and Atari and all that stuff for a while. So those those were kind of collector's items. I even had some old Nintendo, like gold cartridges for Zelda. Um, but yeah, no, I love Zelda. <laughs> if I had a tattoo, which I don't, it's gonna be Zelda. <laughs> which by force, I mean. But, mm. but recommending games. So I think that there are puzzle games, there are really simple games you don't have to spend tons of hours on. You know, I, I used to love Plants vs. Zombies, which was a phone game. I played it on my phone. Mm. I didn't play it anywhere else. I used to love Tetris, which you could play on any system, mm -hmm. Game Boy, whatever. <laughs> um, I, I still play something called Geometry Wars with my kids, which is so silly. It's like this like almost space invader game. And it's so quick, like you don't have to spend hours doing it. You can, you can get lost in it. Um, I love group uh, RPGs. So role-playing games are my favorite. There's mm -hmm. a game called, I think, Dark Alliance that I was very into, or even um, Gauntlet, which is kind of a 80s nerdy um, game, but it's, it's awesome because you can have five people teaming up together. So instead of fighting each other, my favorite games include games where you can kind of support each other or be on together. And though I haven't played as many of the cool online games like the World of Warcraft um, or some of the Final Fantasies that were online, I'm such a, a, a Final Fantasy or RPG girl all the way. Cool. <laughs> so I recommend those games. They're like getting lost. It's like a good book in my opinion. Mm. Have you ever streamed? Is that is that something that you see yourself doing? Now, let me just make sure I clarify by streaming. Do you mean like filming what I'm playing and like talking about it while I play? Is that yeah, it? like having people be there with you while you're playing stuff and just talking to you. Oh, yeah, I would totally do that. There was at least one or two instances where I, I played some some online like Call of Duty type game and everyone could talk. Like, we had the headset on and I was talking. I was talking to these poor little like five-year-olds or eight-year-olds though. And I was like drinking. So I was like, I'm going to kill all of them. <laughs> these people are not old enough to talk with me. Like I'm swearing and oh gosh. So I, I've only done minor stuff like that, but I'd be ecstatic. I love chatting and rambling. So I'm yeah. such a good uh, Our listeners, please comment below if you want to see Crystal stream. We're thinking of, <laughs> we definitely want to start an Urchin Nerd stream and have various mm. guest streamers. So awesome. let us <laughs> know what you think about that. And the platform is Twitch. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Usually? I mean, that's um, the, the is default there one, one nowadays. Oh, okay. <laughs> try to not be completely ignorant of this. <laughs> I have a friend that streams quite a bit. So. <laughs> yeah. I feel like there's always new stuff too. And there's always new platforms mm -hmm. and whatnot. So I, I haven't heard of Twitch yet, but I'm in. I'm sold. I'm sold. <laughs> Yeah, cool. I knew a gamer thing before a gamer. Well, see, I am not as ignorant <laughs> as I thought, right? <laughs> Oh, it's such a wide world. Oh, so yes, Mary, you knew Twitch. <laughs> Good job. Good job. <laughs> Point for me. <laughs> uh, I don't even have you, have you guys seen that video of the gal who was streaming and the guy asked her like, "What color are your What color is your thong today?" Oh, <laughs> have I'm... you seen that? No, I haven't. So it's a gamer girl streaming and she's just like, she's doing a shooter or something and she's going on and, and this uh, troll just says, okay, what color is your thong? And she's like, okay, man, let me tell you why that's not cool. It's uh -huh. awesome. She's a total badass. I got to find that. Watch. I'll find that clip and I'll send it to you guys. We'll put it in the, in the quote here because she's just really schooling him of like, this is why you don't do that, man. <laughs> you know? And she's doing her shooter like the whole time and she's get and she's schooling him like badass. And, and it's like, wow, what if she had like time to prepare and like really put her full attention on that? She would have been like, I mean, she already was amazing. It's like, whoa. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah. Cool. I'll find that for you guys. <laughs> I'm in. Uh, so 
we also heard that you are a Halloween and horror nerd. Tell us more about that. <laughs> so uh, I worked actually at Scare House, which is the um, the best haunted house in Pittsburgh. <laughs> it's a, a real wonderful institution filled with amazing people. Um, I think before I had kids, I was like super into B horror movies and like like the worst of the worst. And I used to <laughs> love just watching them and getting scared and being silly. And even the grossest ones, I didn't mind. And then after having kids, I did take a break. I took a break where I was like, mm, I can't watch that. That's, I would Cause I would get all like weird and think about my kids. And so, and I had like mom brain. So at this point I've gotten back into watching them and feeling comfortable. Um, I think the most recent one I watched was Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> it's so awesome. It's so ridiculous and really dumb, but also awesome. Um, Have you seen Zombiever? So what is it called? Zombiever. No, but I want to, and I want to see that one really badly. I'm it's a zombie. So be. Yeah, I have to see that. So, so z- zombies and vampires are like definitely my favorite. And even the, the crappier, the better. Like what, what other ones did I watch recently? The Dead Don't Die. I really like that all the zombie ones, like hardcore zombies all day. I realized that, <laughs> that I get really excited about them. Um, but that, I think they're a really good take on humanity. I think, again, just like video game and, and I think all movies can be inspiration to like change your ways. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, no, I love, I do love some, some good horror movies. It's been, <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> do you guys like horror movies? Anybody? I'm not into horror. They mess with my head. I find Same. I have really disturbing dreams when I watch horror. Same. So I, yeah, I'll do every now and again, it. but like not very often. <laughs> yeah, not often for sure. It's I not remember as there for me. Yeah, there was a time when I was like watching Supernatural and Charmed and a bunch of things like that, yeah. where it was all demons and fighting and killing and blood. And no, I like that stuff. I like when and... it's fantasy. I like yeah, Supernatural. I, I like it. <laughs> oh, and it was also, um, oh, what's the one with Mulder? X-Files. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I so love I X-Files. Watching, <laughs> so X-Files. I was like watching all of those things at the same time, and it's so messed with my head, and I was like, yeah. I got to really space this stuff out. So, yeah. <laughs> so I go for more fantasy now, tweener kind of stuff. <laughs> I, I couldn't watch Black Mirror because it kept messing with my head. Like, I really like that show, but I was like, oh, man, that's <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, that's I really liked um there's a Sabrina reboot, like the chilling adventures of Sabrina. It was really good. I watch that all the time. I, <laughs> I finished it and I was like, oh, that's it. There's not more. Yeah. But they did it did end it pretty good. So I really enjoyed that. I thought it was a really the, good Is that Sabrina and the Teenage Witch with the Salem the Cat? Yeah, but it's like a darker reimagining of it because the oh, okay. like so the nineties sitcom one was very like mm-hmm. light and happy yeah. and <laughs> Just not dark at all, really. Uh, yeah. I don't think I've seen the new one than the reboot. It's on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. I don't know it's if I want to watch it if it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 pretty dark, so maybe not. Um, is there a scene or a quote from a movie or a TV that Crystal that you've like have like that's your favorite? That's your real connection with that one? You quote it all the time, maybe? <laughs> Let me think. Let me think. So I used to quote Harry Potter like constantly like I'm trying to think of like so there's there's a couple shows that I connect with so well and I remember a couple quotes um I'm trying to think of the one let me think here and of course I'm going to draw a blank right now let me think um (laughs) I used to just sort of like say them while speaking to people like Oh, mm-hmm. in the Matrix. Oh my God. Quoting the Matrix all the time. There is no spoon. Okay. So there is no spoon. That's the one we're going to go with. Cause that That's is the, one. the best. I got a lot in my head, but we'll stick with that one. There's all no right. spoon. And in my family, in my family, it's like, you're killing me smalls. Oh yeah. That's, that's the one. one. <laughs> I don't usually say it, but my sisters say it all the time. <laughs> I'm like, okay, man, okay. you're <laughs> killing me smalls and you're killing me smalls all the time. <laughs> I love it. So um, just to finish up, like what, what would you tell anybody who, who is new to cuddling, hasn't actually taken steps to engage with it yet? What advice or what, what would you want them to know? And let me ask, do you mean from the standpoint of a wanting to be a professional cuddler or from the standpoint of wanting to be a client or both? 
yeah Even- anything I mean just yeah. as who you are and mm-hmm. what you have to what your experience has taught you what wisdom you have mm-hmm. to anybody whatever that looks like for them whether they want to be a practitioner or they want to be you know an enthusiast a client or just go to virtual events or just do in person like anything mm-hmm. I think um that again I think it takes a lot of courage uh to step into any plane with, with this realm to, I mean, to, to become a cuddler or to even become a client or to come into a group event. But I think that it's one of those really rewarding things that I would recommend anyone with any curiosity to feel free to reach out, to call anybody, to talk with anybody, even just to, to Google things. The wonderful part of, of, you know, right now is that you can find information so readily. Um, We've got a lot of wonderful resources and community. And once you know one one wonderful cuddler you honestly know like 17 I I have so many wonderful people (laughs) that I'm grateful to say I could recommend if you're in a different city or if you just want to hear about it or you just want to watch some YouTube videos um or listen to an amazing podcast so I'm I'm so excited to say that if you have any interest if you have any questions you know do do some research in the right spots and then reach out and ask questions to whoever you feel comfortable with you know because we're always here and happy to talk about it (laughs) And how, how would people get in touch with you, Crystal? Where do they find you? Oh, so they can find me um, either on my Facebook, the Crystal's Cuddle Therapy. I do have a website that is just www.crystaltherapy.cc. Um, I also have a phone number, a business line that I love hearing from people um, and an email. So it's crystaltherapy.cc at gmail. Um, or my phone number is 412 412- three six eight two four oh nine and I am always super happy to chat I love talking up cuddling <laughs> talking up how much it helped me um and I'm so grateful to share in that with people so always nice. reach out thank you how, how are you feeling how are you feeling about coming on and talking with us today <laughs> well I feel wonderful I was very nervous at first And I always try to stay relatively measured, but by the end, my oxytocin levels just start shooting through the roof and I get so happy. (laughs) Happy to be seen, happy to share with you guys and happy to talk and connect with you. Mm. Good. good. Us too. Thank you for being here with us. And you're welcome to stay for the rest of the podcast if you'd Mm -hmm. like. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. I would love that. (sighs) Yes, thanks for coming. Um, Yeah. I actually have a story I wanted to tell you guys because <laughs> I was able to find uh, uh, our next guest because she's um, she's a good friend of mine and she's a gamer. And um, we were actually doing a uh, <laughs> we were doing a video um, reading of a play yesterday. <laughs> and we're, I don't know if I I don't know how many theater nerds we have out there. But if I just say sardines, do you know what show I'm talking about? Anybody? <laughs> No, <laughs> theater nerds would know what that is, but it, the show is called Noises Off, and so we were reading it. And um, I don't know, this could probably be crossover to a lot of nerdy things. Here's my sardines from the show. These are not actually sardines; these are these are little plastic fish lures. But I used them as sardines in the show, <laughs> so I have all my props still here because I haven't cleaned it up. But anyway, we were reading. Uh, we were starting to read the show on Zoom with each other, and. Um, I, I was, I said, and you're a consummate actri- actress. And she said, well, I can never hear that word without thinking of Trogdor. Who knows what Trogdor is? Anybody? It's Trogdor, familiar, the burn- but... Burninator. <laughs> so she, she sent me uh, the link to uh, this old uh, cartoon from Strong Bad, Strong Bad email from like, I guess, 10 or 15 years ago. And, and this, this silly little guy is like looking at his email. It's like, oh, I'm looking at the email. I hope it's from a female. <laughs> and she was so excited to like share this link and to do this little goofy thing. She's, she's a nerd. So, and I love it. <laughs> so, so this, uh, this little character draws a dragon and the dragon's name is Trogdor the Burninator. And apparently this is a thing people know about, but I had never heard about it before. Um, so I wanted to find out how many of you guys knew about it. Um, cause she's like, Oh, you don't know Trogdor. I'm like, she's like, everybody knows about it. It's been a long time. I'm like, well, I don't know about it. I need nerds to tell me these things. So, <laughs> anyway, 
So that's your teaser for my really good friend who's a great actress and a gamer and a nerd, and she's going to be on next time. <laughs> so that's my nerdy Can't thing. Wait. <laughs> awesome. And we're name twins. Yes, name twins. Yes, her name is Alyssa. So that will be fun for us next time. So I'm going to bring an actual nerd for my nerdy thing next week. Okay. <laughs> well, I wanted to share my nerdy thing. So I... I'm wearing the same shirt as I wore yesterday because I wore a nerdy shirt and forgot to tell you guys about it. And I think Crystal, you'll appreciate this because you said you're a Harry Potter fan, but I have a Hogwarts shirt. Mm. I love it. <laughs> Great. Does it, it just says Hogwarts and has the, oh my God, it has the logo and the animals. And the four houses and it's a yeah. school of witchcraft and wiz wizardry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, do you know what house you, you would be in? So I'm like this Ravenclaw Hufflepuff hybrid, but mostly Ravenclaw. So it's like, mm. it's kind of, it, like so I saw this graphic once that showed, it was a, like a little while after I'd first taken my Myers-Briggs uh, personality test and got the results, um, like what Myers-Briggs would go in what house. And um, so I see it as kind of like that, that it's all a spectrum of like, I'm kind of close to something, but really on the side of this other thing. So that's how I see myself with the houses is like, I would probably be Ravenclaw, but like, I'm close to being Hufflepuff. Mm -hmm. What about you, Crystal? <laughs> it's funny, because when you said that, I was thinking like very similarly, like along the same lines. I think I have more Hufflepuff in me though. <laughs> and like, but I definitely feel like a Ravenclaw Hufflepuff vibe. I, I always wanted to say Gryffindor, but the truth is, I think, definitely. <laughs> I love it. Mm. They just seem cuddly to me. They seem like it would be a cuddle group. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the funny <laughs> thing is like Hufflepuff's um, mascot is a badger and they're like vicious. <laughs> but then like also they're portrayed as like this house that's like very kind and hardworking mm. and like mm. friendly and just they definitely. support each other. So yeah, there's mm. definitely, I think it's more of like, they're vicious if they're like protecting who they love kind of from mm -hmm. danger mm -hmm. so I, I mean there's strength there still even in Hufflepuff even though a lot of people think they might be pushovers but they're not if you push them they'll they'll push That's back right, right? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah I like that <laughs> cool hmm should we talk about our favorite cuddle position for this week well, did you have something nerdy you wanted to share, Mary? Oh, that was my nerdy thing about my actual nerd. Oh, um, yeah, the theater nerd <laughs> stuff. I forgot. I'm sorry. Um, That's okay. Yeah, I don't know if I want to show you, like, all the random props I have here. Here's my axe that I used <laughs> my, oh my for the show yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, let's see. What else do we have? I have a phone. So I've got all my random props. Well, they're not random. I used them for the show. They're all sitting here. And my... Uh, whiskey bottle that's actually butterscotch schnapps because I don't drink whiskey my I don't drink butterscotch schnapps either but my brother does so <laughs> I anyway. actually have a bottle of that because I used it to make a butterbeer mixed drink recipe oh, yeah for, an, for a Harry Potter reference again <laughs> um <laughs> Love yeah, but these these fish are pretty nerdy to have still sitting on my desk I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them now <laughs> I was waiting for you to put one in your mouth thing <laughs> yeah so let's talk about the cuddle position um I have one that that I'd like to share if that's all okay. right yeah um, please do so uh, the one I wanted to share is called mouse and cheese and it's really similar to koala except like the person who's the tree I mean they're just they're still in the same kind of position as koala but then the person who would be the koala instead is a mouse and and the way that that looks different is that they're sitting up a little more and they're kind of like resting sideways on the other person's stomach or chest. Um, and I learned this position in my cuddle sanctuary training. I just and it, it makes me feel small and childlike. And so that's why I like it. What about you guys? Have you done that? Crystal, you said you have. And like, yeah, what, I just learned it. what do you like about it? Oh, it's one, it is one of my favorites actually uh, to use. And I've, I've used like similarities before learning it, like similar types of poses. I think that for me, it's such a nice one. I feel like 
I don't know, because I just feel like draping over the person is very comforting, not only to me, but them. Mm-hmm. And so I, uh, I get a lot of positive from that one. That's like one mm-hmm. of, it is one of my favorites too, actually. Yeah, I guess a better way to illustrate it in words more is like with koala, both people are kind of parallel, um, like their legs are both going the same way. With mouse and cheese, it's more perpendicular, like the mouse's uh. directionally is like a little more like their head and their face and their torso is kind of going across the person that's laying down. Definitely. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I actually haven't heard of that one. I haven't really studied all the names of the different positions. Um, I know some training programs really are focused on like learning positions and I haven't taken those yet. So. <laughs> um, it's always good to hear what people call them. Do you um, have a cuddle position you'd like to recommend, Crystal? I was going to say, um, along what you were saying, Mary, I, I think, yeah, there's a lot of positions and poses and things you can do. And like, mm-hmm. I've learned a lot and some of them kind of overlap and some of them, I have no idea what the names are or I'll forget. Right. So I feel there's, I feel like there's such a gamut of, of possibilities out there. Yes. And um, I, I was going to say in, in the vein of nurtured nerds and gaming, I did learn a position that I wanted to talk about today. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Tetris and of course Tetris is one of my favorite games yeah. and I did learn it in my cuddle sanctuary training good luck explaining uh, what it looks like mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I didn't understand until I actually saw a picture <laughs> I was gonna say I think sometimes poses can be so hard to explain and yeah unless you have a photo or you've done it um mm-hmm. but you, the the one party maybe the cuddly uh lays flat um and then lifts up their legs a little bit so they're laying on their back oh, and then yes lifting up their legs and then the party uh the cuddler cuddler will say is almost spooning them they're laying towards their side and they're mm. putting their legs underneath the lifted mm. legs it's almost like they're fitting together like little puzzle pieces or little tetris mm-hmm. pieces and so it's kind of like koala but you're down farther on the side yeah. and your legs are underneath their legs rather than the legs yeah. just being next to each other okay yeah so the one laying on their side has their knees up in a in a yeah. well, one on their back yeah yeah. So the one on their back would lift their, their knees, yeah. their knees and put it on top of the one that has their yeah. knees at a perpendicular angle on the side. Yeah. And then they have the one on top. Basically of your two tetrominoes it. that are kind of. Yeah. I, like that that one. I love yeah. that position. I was doing that yesterday. Awesome. <laughs> I can't wait to try it. I've done similar things, but I can't wait to test it. I've just learned it. So I'm very pumped to try it. Oh yeah. It's really comforting, but it's, it can be scary if you're not really, you know, connected with the person yet, because it is like full connection all over. (laughs) It's very, very uh, touch heavy. It's like full contact almost. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, I highly recommend it if you're with somebody that you feel like you're ready for that. It's a great position and and it's still good for talking you know that's that's why I like all those ones where you can have your face open because you can still talk yeah your face yeah. open I'm picturing like little doors <laughs> yeah <laughs> no I know what you mean though hmm. cool well unfortunately we're getting to the end I think um yeah is there anything more that we need to say before we do our sign off I'm good. Uh, just, How we're hey, feeling. I'm so, I'm so grateful that I was here with you ladies. Mm. We're Thank grateful you. that you came to be with us. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love talking about this stuff. And, you know, I am grateful too, because the team here is so amazing. I said, well, I'll do whatever if you just let me show up and do it. Cause I can talk for hours. <laughs> I just, you know, doing prep is hard for me right now. <laughs> So they have it arranged so that I can just show up and talk about stuff I love. And it's been amazing. I love it. So awesome. Yeah. And, and on that note, I want to give some thank yous to our people that are making this happen because Alyssa is our driver for the whole Nurture Nerds project and she's doing so many cool things. And then we also have our amazing um, producer, director, editor, our ghost in the armor doing all that. And he is putting in so much work on this podcast. I can't even tell you. Um, and that's why it's happening. So thank you, ghost in the armor, Gita. Uh, thank you. you're, yeah. Thank you so much. Mm. Um, yeah. Seconded. Yes. Thank mm-hmm. you so much. Yep. And, and with that, um, 
yeah please visit our website all the links in the description nurturednerds.com our subreddit r slash nurtured nerds uh facebook.com slash nurtured nerds um and be sure to check out our current raid for our community um Mm -hmm. jerk proof your relationships at uh, Mm cassandrabrown.org oh subscribe like hit the bell yeah this is a community, you know, we want, we want to interact with you. We're all about connection. That's what we're doing here. So please give us comments, write to us. And if you want to do more, come, we're inviting people who want to be part of a, what are you calling it, Alyssa? The people that are doing the Epic Quest Committee? Is that what it is? Yeah, the Nurtured Nerds Epic Quest Committee. Yeah. So that's what our project team is called. And yeah, anyone's welcome to join that, no mm-hmm. matter what your contribution looks like. We want everyone contributing to this. It's a Mm co-creation. Yeah, it's so fun. So good. So yay. Are we feeling nurtured? I'm feeling nurtured. (laughs) I'm feeling nurtured. (laughs) Yay. Group hug. Here we go. Hug yourself. Yes, please. (laughs) And remember those warm feelings that you put out towards the person you're hugging when you're Mm -hmm. hugging another person give that to yourself Mm -hmm. yes please (sighs) (laughs) all right thanks guys until next next time time. yep bye bye (sighs) (laughs) Uh...